<laughs> and welcome to another Kath and Hannah Cheapskate Show. I'll take a deep breath. It's been a bit of a rush tonight. Never mind, we're here and I'm set to go and make sausage rolls. Best ever sausage rolls. Can't beat them. They are just delicious, aren't they, Floss? Yeah. See, Floss says, yep. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Sausage rolls, just in time for winter, just in time for Easter, during the school holidays. They are good for lunches. They are great cold for picnics. You can have them hot with a salad for dinner. If you think they need more, you can have them hot with a salad and chippies for dinner and make a meal out of them. You can make them as big or as small as you like, and I'll talk about that. I'll show you what I do because you can have man-sized sausage rolls or you can have dainty little nibbly finger food-sized sausage rolls, just as easy. And depending on who you're entertaining, you choose your size as you make them. They're really good. They're great for parties, and they freeze really, really well. But before we do that, I have to show you this bargain. Look at this. You see that? 60, oh, you can't see the price. 63 cents. I oh, can't get it. There you go. 63 cents these were. Pitters um, on Markdown at Coles today. So Hannah picked up five packets. There's five in a packet. We've done this before with this particular pita bread. It does need to be kept in the fridge or in the freezer. Freezes beautifully, but it makes the best pizza bases. Or you can cut it up. And do you know how we make the pita chips by brushing them with the oil and baking it in the oven? You can do that with these too. Makes some really great souvlaki wraps, wraps for just lunches with salad in them. They are brilliant, brilliant. So we've got five packets of those. She said there were 40, about 40 packets, but we just don't have the freezer room. So she only bought what she knew would fit in our freezer. And that's something else that we can add to the stockpile, the freezer stockpile. So for um, $3.15, we've got enough pitas or pizza bases for five meals at least five meals, probably more if we use them for pizza bases. I'm just going to pop them over here out of the way while we do our sausage rolls. And I'll move them out and out of the way. And there we go, yes, yeah, sausage rolls. So who have we got on tonight? Diana? Hello, Diana. And Emma Jane, Maureen, hello. Trisha from England. Trisha from England. Yes. Um, Eve. Alicia B. Leslie, Pamela, Narelle, Freya, Diana, Emma, Maureen. Heaps of people tonight. Already making a sausage rolls that popular. <laughs> really good. And I agree with, with Eve. We were talking to um, AJ, number one son, earlier about um, souvlakis. Now, Wayne and I are going away tomorrow. We're away camping for the weekend. So Hannah's trying to talk AJ into using some of the pitters to make souvlakis while we're away because he makes good souvlakis. Thomas does the best lamb kebabs. His recipe is to die for. And I just make normal stuff. So they'll eat well while we're away. Anyway, so, hi, Anne, Julian Rod, Michelle, my goodness, Tuna Williams, Rach has made it. Hello, Mrs. Franklin. Um, go, Thomas. Yeah. Oh, Tom has a couple of things that he specialises in, Granny's Caramel Slice and the Lamb Kebabs. Oh, my goodness, they are brilliant. Now, um, Karen hasn't emailed me about her prize pack yet. So message me or email me. Um, I've left a message for her, for you. So please get in touch with me. I just need an address to send it to. It's all wrapped up. 
and boxed, ready to go. I just need to drop it at the post office. So I can't wait to do that. I'm, I'm quite excited about doing that. So if you could just give me a hoy and let me know where to send it, it'll be gone in a flash. I'll even do a special post office run just for you. Okay, now, sausage rolls. These are pretty much the sausage rolls my mum made. They are real meat, really easy, really, really tasty. I grew up with these sausage rolls and I love them. My kids have grown up with them. I love them. And extended family have had them and like them too. So before we start, I've got the pastry out and I'm cheating tonight and just using puff pastry sheets. It's easy. They are inexpensive. These are from Coles. And this one's stuck together. That one wasn't supposed to do that. You lost the plastic. I did lose the plastic. That's all right. We'll put those there and we'll use these ones. Um, just from Coles, ready roll puff pastry sheets. And I think they're $2.30 a kilo. And you get six sheets in the box. I just need a knife to separate them so I don't break them. Should get the big one. Yeah. I always use the big knife, don't you? Mm -hmm. Slide it between the plastic and the pastry. Here we go. Um, if you are a good pastry chef, you can make your own puff pastry. I've never tried to make puff pastry. I don't. I'm not that good a pastry chef, so mm -hmm. I will cheat and buy it every time. There we go. Three sheets we should probably do the recipe tonight, I'm thinking. Well, we can always get more if we need it. So while that's there thawing, it's only one sheet. Pop that back in the container. These um, decor pastry containers are brilliant. I have one for puff pastry and one for sure. short crust. And one for wraps. And one for wraps. And they just slide in the freezer. And decor stuff's often on sale at Coles and Woolworths, Big W, Kmart. So when it's on a half price sale, they're really handy. I actually have one in the fridge too, and I use it as a tray to keep all the jams and sauces in the one spot. It just sits on the top shelf. So while the pastry is finishing thawing, we will take some bread. This is just ordinary sandwich bread that I've broken up. Now, if you don't like the crust, take the crusts off if you want to. I don't, so I just break it up into little bits like this. So the crusts will go mushy. And then what I do with this is get the kettle of hot water. We just boil the kettle. Hannah just made a cup of tea for herself. And I just put some boiling water over it. Just a drizzle. I don't know how much it is. I don't measure it just till it soaks in and it will soak in. You want the bread to go soft and mushy and squishy. So that should do for the minute. Might need a bit more. It's not squishy and mushy enough. There go. That's better. Let it soak for a little while. Then we have one large onion that I whizzed in the food processor. You can grate it if you like. Try and make it fine. Remember I explained with the rissoles, the finer it is, the better it all sticks together. And then we have, for this recipe, it's just a single recipe, 500 grams of sausage mince. Now, I buy the sausage mince in bulk in five kilo bags and it's $2 a kilo, works out to $2 a kilo which is fine because I bring it home, portion it out and freeze it. Um, if that's going to be way too much for you, you can get it in 500 gram um, chubs at the supermarket for about $4, I think. It's quite expensive from the supermarket, so think about it into that. And then all we need is some good old-fashioned mixed herbs. Now, for ease of mixing 
I put the herbs in with the onion and I should measure it because I think it says a tablespoon of herbs in my recipe. Tablespoon, yeah. But if you like more, put more in. If you like a bit less herby, put less in and I'm going to put more in because that doesn't look quite enough. There we go. And that just smushes around. Now, if I wasn't doing this to show you how they're done, I would have had the onion in the bottom of this bowl with the herbs and the bread on top and the water on top of that just to save a bowl. So if you want to do it that way, feel free just to save a bowl. Now, is that squishy enough yet? Nope. A bit more water. There we go. Okay. While I'm waiting for this to go squishy, I will tell you, after our stockpiling um, shows the last couple of Tuesdays, people have been sending me all sorts of interesting things about stockpiling. One popped into my um, inbox just before we had our dinner and it was off the ABC, so abc.net.au slash news, and you'll be able to type in the search and find it, about Switzerland um, having a stockpile of coffee. Apparently, Switzerland as a nation, as a country, and it's only a small country, but it's, and it's landlocked and it's sort of up there in the middle of nowhere, really, when you compare to Australia, um, have a stockpile of basic food in grief, food needs for their citizens. And they started this, started the stockpile between World War I and World War II, and they have maintained it. And they have a three-month stockpile of basic food needs for all their citizens, or what they estimate would be the basic food needs. Yes. How is coffee a necessity? Well, I was just getting to that. And coffee, or coffee beans, it's coffee beans that they have stockpiled, has been a part of that stockpile. Now the government is moving to release, not ban the stockpile, but release coffee as being one of the items they need to stockpile because it's really not a food and it's not a, new, not a dietary necessity. It has no nutritional benefits or whatever. Um, so I would think that would, it would have definitely be a food group in this house, but um, I'm thinking, you know, sort of, but it's a bit like, I'm guessing, I'm imagining not having coffee would be like not having tea during the war when tea was rationed. It would just be dreadful. And I can remember my grandma or my, my great-grandma and my grandma talking about having chicory syrup or chicory drops or something that they added to hot water to make mock coffee or pretend coffee during the war, World War II. And them saying they would have just, you know, they saved the real coffee for special occasions. So I thought it was interesting that a country would actually think ahead to have a stockpile of food for its citizens because I can assure you Australia doesn't and I'm pretty sure the USA doesn't. Um, I don't think New Zealand does. So that's better. Can you all see how squishy and mushy that is? Does that look... Can you hear it squishing? That's all squishy and mushy. So let me mix the onion and herbs into that. And as I said, I would normally just do this in one bowl, but to show you how to do it, we'll use two. Um, there we go. Yeah, so Switzerland has 15,300 tonnes, that's metric tonnes, of coffee beans stockpiled and they expect that by the end of 2022 they will have um, used it up and they will not be stockpiling coffee anymore. They haven't said anything about any of the other things they have stockpiled like the flour, the sugar, that sort of thing. They are necessities, yes, and you can do a lot of flour and sugar. 
can do a lot with coffee. It keeps people saying. Okay, now, squishy. Oh, you could if you wanted to, but seriously, it's noisy. Why would I? Would okay. This is the this is the icky bit. This is the bit I'm not good at. Is squishing it all in. I will start with the fork and mix it all through. My um. That might work. Okay. The idea is to mix it through so that you can't see the bread. You want want it all to be the orangey, apricotty, pinky colour of the sausage bag. So start with you will have to use your hands eventually. Start with a fork or a spoon. Let's see how I go with this. This might actually work better. There we go. Let's see that at all. Is that showing up? Yeah. Good. Okay. And with the bread being soft and soggy, it um, goes all smushy and mushes down, but then goes smooth so you don't have lumps of bread through the sausage mince. And adding a little water keeps it moist. And we add the bread to the sausage mince because sausage mince is quite fatty on its own. And I don't like greasy, slippery sausage rolls. So we add the bread, or mum added the bread, and now I do, because it soaks up or absorbs the grease or the fat out of the meat, and sausage rolls aren't greasy at all. So, all right, so that's nice and smooth now. The only chunks in there are actually the bits of onion and some of the herbs. And that's ready to go. We had a big disaster here this morning, folks. I thought I was going to have to cancel tonight. I was just not going to cope. So I loaded up the dishwasher, as I do in the mornings, put the powder in, shut the door, hit the button and nothing happened. So I hit the button again and nothing happened. So I opened the door and shoveled around and made sure all the shelves were in properly and shut the door again and listened for the click and hit the button and still nothing happened. So when AJ came home at lunchtime, I told him and he dragged it out and had a look around and couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. I pushed it back in and then it was back in, sort of back in its spot. So when Wayne came home from work, pulled it out and had a look and he shoveled around and then he tapped something and he tried to unscrew something and there's power getting to it so we don't know why it won't actually turn on. I'm more worried about it not washing the dishes because I really don't like washing dishes. Not my favourite thing at all. Now, I have wet hands and pastry is nice and soft. I've got my trays here. I made some sausage rolls earlier, so I've got the trays here. I'm going to hold I use the baking paper until it um, falls apart. So it just gets wiped over and reused. What's wrong? How much bread did you use? Four slices of bread, about four slices of bread, four normal slices of bread. You could use two bread rolls. You can use more bread if you want to. It will bulk it out a bit more. Um, but four slices works for me now. Wet hand so this stuff doesn't stick to me. And I'm going to... You always need to put it in a piping bag. Well... I think that's how Grandma used to do some of them in fucking bags. Great moves, things a lot. Down the edge, just leave a little bit of a seam on your pastry. I have to take it right to the end because there's nothing worse than getting the last little sausage roll that's got just pastry and you're eating air. So I've cut the pastry sheet in half. And now I'm making my sausage down the middle. Now, it's not too fat because it won't roll up properly if it's too fat. And there we go. Is that one enough? 
Move you over here. Move you here. Try again. I'm just eyeballing the half too. And I'm not cutting my bench because the plastic is underneath it. So I haven't taken it off the plastic sheets. Let's push it up down there. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Just wash it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just need to get one of the stuff here. Okay. Mm. Needs a bit of a mix up. Slide it over. Here we go. I haven't put the oven on yet, but I'll put it on in just a moment. We had it on earlier to cook tea, so it's still warm. It won't take long to come up to temperature, in case you're wondering, because I'm really big on preheat the oven for baking things. Okay. Oops. Hit the... I cook them at between 210 and 220. Um, because they're pastry and I was always taught that pastry had to have a very hot oven and puff pastry especially needs a hot oven or it doesn't puff. So, cooking them at a cooler temperature will work but your pastry won't be as nice. Okay, so I've got these sausages. I might need another sheet of pastry. So I'm making these. I'm going to take some away with us for lunches and we'll leave some at home for the kids to lunch on over the weekend. We're heading off to um, Walhalla, which is in Gippsland. I'll just wash this finger off, folks. I'll be right back. We're heading off to Walhalla tomorrow. We're meeting some friends. And we're going to camp by a river and enjoy the weekend. Tomorrow is supposed to be really nice. The rest of the weekend is going to be a bit doubtful, I think, but never mind. Doesn't really matter. Now, I'm using the paper or the plastic to roll it over. And I'll lift it off. I popped it onto my baking tray. Seam side down is how I was taught to do it. So that's what I do. Seam side down. Roll it over. Push them up. I can usually get three or four to a tray. Just making sure. I'm thinking about um, a question someone asked on Tuesday night about um, was I a prepper or a survivalist and I said no, I'm neither. In, in the official terms of those things. I'm certainly not a survivalist, so that's it. Let's get rid of that. When I was thinking about prepping and what it meant, so maybe I am a bit of a prepper, because as I said, I'm not a fan of surprises and I don't like going without them. I do like my luxuries and I do like to be prepared. So maybe I am a prepper in some sense of the word. I'm certainly not a prepper in terms of we have stocks of fuel and ammunition and things and I wouldn't know how to shoot a gun if it, you know, if my life depended on it. So I'd just 
big in trouble. Okay, I have enough left to do another sheet of pastry, which is what I'm going to do while the oven comes up to temperature. I might turn those into something else. Oh, do the cracker drops in this? Yep. Matchsticks, yes. There we go. Plastic's got to be good for something. Okay, it's nearly thawed. It won't take long. talking about tea on Tuesday too and I said Tetley it's not Tetley it's Twinings it's on sale and why while I said Tetley, Tetley I don't know because then I went back and had a look at my notes and my notes even say Twinings so, and we don't drink Tetley tea no right. Maureen uses the blue sheets um, blue sheets for the pastry as good Go between, yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay, let's just try. I'm pumping them out a bit so that I can use it all. There's no point in having just a squinchy bit left, is there? wonder when I'm doing this. Have you seen the sushi roller thing of a jitters that you can get? I often think wouldn't it be really good if we could have a pastry sausage roll roller thing of a So that we could just um, put it in and put the filling in and it would just roll through. Now so we've got eight there. We're making them if I'm making them just for us to eat I just cut them in half and just like that not quite all the way through just like so and they're man sized sausage rolls if I'm doing them for parties I cut them into four just like that and they're like party sausage rolls if we're doing finger food they get cut into six and they become the tiny teeny tiny little dainty delicate fancy sausage rolls and that's how they're done so i put the fork over here yes that's all goopy all right get a new fork and we stab the top like so Sometimes if I have um, sesame seeds, I will sprinkle them with sesame seeds because they're just delicious with sesame seeds on top. Okay, and I've got an egg wash here. And that's just a beaten egg with about a tablespoon of water in it. That's all that is. And just brush, brush, brush with my pastry brush. And I must remember that I need a new pastry brush because they're starting to lose their bristles. I found a bristle in something the other day that we cooked. I can't remember what it was. Okay. Oh, oh it's in the scrolls, that's right. I was trying to remember what we cooked. Don't use a lot of No, I don't use it very often. Okay, now. I haven't got sesame seeds. I looked at them in the supermarket today, but they were so expensive. 
six dollars for this little tiny tiny thing jar. Okay, into the oven. The timer for 15 minutes. They take about 25 to 30 minutes to cook. So then um, I set the timer for 15 minutes and I swap the trays over and turn them around just so they cook evenly all the way through. But while we're waiting, Here's some we prepared before. Okay. I can move these things. My kettle. So get it cooked properly on the bottom. Okay, on it here. Okay. These are what we call the party size. These are the man size. And these little babies are our finger food size. There you go. And out comes the sauce bottle. I want to put a grin on my face. Which size do you want? Uh, middle. Just one. It should give it a taste test and let us know how they go. Now, when you put them on the trays to go into the oven, lay them side by side, but leave a bit of a gap between them so they can puff up, but also so the air can get down and actually cook the bottom and the sides as well, because there's nothing worse than soggy pastry and uncooked pastry. It's really ugh. So pop those back there. Once they're cool, I'll put them into a container with a lid and pop them in the fridge. I'll have to hide them, otherwise the fridge fairies will, will strike. Good? Good. There you go. Okay, so the recipe, I'll read it out to you. The ingredients, 500 grams of sausage mince, two, excuse me, two medium or one large onion grated, Two bread rolls or four slices of bread, crumbed. One tablespoon of mixed herbs, give or take. Three or four sheets of puff pastry. And one egg and a little water beaten together for the egg wash. So preheat your oven. Line your baking trays with baking paper. That's what you use. Then boil some water. Soak your bread, add your onion and herbs, mush it all in, add that to your sausage meat, give it a really good mix so that it's smooth and combined so that you can't tell the bread is in there. And then lay out the strips of sausage mince on your pastry, roll it over, seam side down onto the trays and into the very hot oven for 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven, of course. And that's it. I, will I think this recipe is actually in the recipe file, but I will post it in the show notes too for you. Um, and it is the best ever sausage roll. There used to be a place, a, a pie place called Jester's that we had here in Melbourne, and they made good sausage rolls. The pie is pretty average, but they made really good sausage rolls, almost as good as these because they had lots of flavour to them. Whereas you can get sausage rolls from the bakery and they're just bland, bland and flavourless and expensive, $2.80 to $3.20 each, each, folks. So my 500 grams of sausage mince was a dollar. My two onions or my large onion was about 30 cents. The bread was probably uh, maybe 30 cents. So we're up to $1.60. Eggs, 25 cents, $1.85. Mixed herbs, 
I'll be generous and say 25 cents for the tablespoon of mixed herbs. So that's $2.10. And then three sheets of pastry, $1.15. So that's $3.25 to make a lot of sausage rolls. So you will get... Oh. Um, that's wrong. This is crazy. We'll pay five dollars for a sausage roll in Western Australia. Five dollars? Oh, it's terrible. Oh no. Oh, you wouldn't mind. Look, honestly, I don't mind paying for food if I enjoy it, but I really don't like paying for food if it's not good. Oh, that's terrible, Leanne. Oh no. Sorry. Um, okay, so. What's store-bought, darling? The pastry? Yeah. Yeah, the pastry is just Coles um, sheets from the freezer, $2.30. Where is it? Down here. This is what it looks like. Coles ready rolled puff pastry. I have Coles because that's where I was today when I was buying pastry. If I was in Aldi, I would have bought the Aldi pastry. Woolworths sometimes have really good sales on Borg's pastry which is, is a nice pastry box. So, um, yeah. Um, Maureen said that you mentioned in another video that you sometimes use potato in the sausage rolls. Please explain. Please explain. Okay. Oh, can you explain? I said that, please. <laughs> please explain. Um, okay. Cool. Yes. You can use mashed potato in your sausage rolls. I use mashed potato when I am making veggie rolls, cheese and cheese and veggie rolls. So, but, and when I'm making nut meat rolls, mashed potato in the nut meat rolls too. Now, still use your bread. If you're making ordinary sausage rolls like this, you'll go through your sausage mince, the onion, the bread, soak the bread and whatever. Keep some mashed potato, or if you're cooking potatoes the night before, you know you're going to make sausage rolls, Steam or boil a couple of extra potatoes and take them out and dry mash them. So don't add butter or milk, just have them dry. Add that to your meat mixture and it just bulks it out. It doesn't change the flavour, it just adds more to it. So like I added TVP to the haystacks mixture and to the chilli last week, adding the mashed potato to your sausage rolls or your nut meat rolls or your cheese and veggie rolls, whatever you're making, just bulks it out and stretches it. And so you can easily double the quantity you make without doubling the cost. Easy as that. But always dry mash. Don't, um, don't use mash if it's got milk, butter, whatever in it because it will be too soft. You need a dry mash to stretch your rolls out yeah how much adds grated carrot, carrot and zucchini to hers yes you can if you want to yeah we don't obviously but yeah if i'm making the cheese and veggie rolls i add um i have grated carrot i have onion i have zucchini i will use um turnip grated turnip or swede great way to use it up and it you can taste it but it doesn't taste like turnip or swede um potato some pepper um some cracked back black pepper and then cheese and an egg to bind it and into puff pastry and bake them they're really good now if you wanted to be really sneaky you could use frozen peas corn and carrots which is when I'm making the nut meat rolls, I dice the nut meat, I add some peas, corn and carrots, a grated onion, a big thing of mixed herbs, and then I dissolve about two teaspoons, a good blob of Vegemite or Marmite in just a very little hot water. I just want to dissolve it in probably a quarter of a cup, tip that in, then I cook that um, for about five minutes till it's all soft and smushy. Mash it with my potato masher or a hard fork and put that in the pastry and bake it the same way as I do the sausage rolls. And that's really good too. They are good, aren't they? Yeah. 
So I can cook it on the stove or I can nuke it. If I'm going to nuke it, it's probably three to five minutes, depending on how, many, how much veggies I've put in and whatever. And I use that too, and they're really good. Mm. Okay. Right. Sweet potato, yum. I have thought of sweet potato, Mrs. Franklin. My kitchen's very brown. Sorry. It's the way it is. It is what it is. Um yeah all right so i'm listening to the timer tick the 10 minutes must be nearly up 15. 15 yeah i've still got three minutes to go and then i'll check them and turn them and swap them around show you what they look like show you what i mean about keeping the space so they cook on the bottom properly because um soggy pastry is just not good and i prefer this pastry to the pastry we get from the bakery because it's quite doughy it's 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 a cross between a short crust and a, it's not really puff pastry at all it's but it's quite doughy and it can be and it is yeah it leaves that greasy feeling at the top of your mouth it does too so i prefer the puff pastry it's a bit lighter it still keeps it all together and it does its job beautifully all right, excuse me, I'll have a drink. I'm running out of warmth. Yeah, so, yes, and now someone asked last week what happened to my apron. I forgot it. I wasn't organised enough and I just forgot to get it out, but I remember it today. I remember today. Yeah, all right. Now, cooking, cooking, cooking. Waiting for paint to dry, isn't it? Awful paint for that dinner to go off. Never mind. Nice. Sorry? It smells nicer. It does smell nicer than washing paint dry, yes. Alright, so. What else do I have to tell you? Anything else? Yes, you can use Elaine's Easy Pastry if you want to. It's not a puff pastry. It will still, it still gives it a nice um, case. Roll it a bit thin. Don't have it quite so thick. Roll it a little thinner and it will be really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I love the bricks on the wall for exploding squid. Wow. Um, I love the bricks. I, re I really, really do. Um, I like the look of them and I like the texture. I really like them in the kitchen because it's going to sound terrible. I am so, it's so easy to look after because I literally can get the upholstery nozzle on the vacuum and vacuum the wall. I don't have to scrub tiles or anything like that so I really like the bricks and we've been talking about kitchen renovations and things and I'm like who's going to take the bricks away just leave the bricks take away the ugly cupboards and the dodgy oven and the crooked cooktop that's fine please don't take the bricks away I really like the bricks because it work they work for me it just works for me oh, so right My knuckles don't get close enough to them. All right. Okay. Oh, I never thought of doing that. Leanne um, cooks her sausage rolls on cake coolers over a tray to catch the drips. I don't have drips, but I know what you mean. Tuesday's topic, Pamela. I'll be winding up the um, stockpiling. There's just a little bit more to go over with that, but that won't be the whole show. Then I want to go on to sort of getting budgets organised and what, are we, what housekeeping money organised and 
and set an, how to set an amount so that it works for you. You're not overspending. You're able to save a bit and put a bit away for a rainy day. Okay. Oh, what is it done? My fan's not working. Alright. Get the wooden spoon. Or that. And just get in there. Here we go. No, don't get your tray. Alright, there it goes. Okay. Now, a little bit of, you know, mobile repairs there. We need a new oven too. That's what they look like at the moment after 15 minutes. They're starting to cook through. The pastry is hard, but you can still see it's still quite soft on the sides. So I'm popping them back in. I've taken it out like that. This was off the top shelf. It's going around that way. This was off the bottom shelf, and it's going back in that way. I actually might put it down there and see how that goes. All right. And we'll give them another few minutes. Let's see how they go. And she come out. Oh, golden and delicious. All right. Now, um, yes, because I'll finish off the stock, sorry, back to Tuesday, finish off the stockpiling. I could talk about it for the rest of the year, but that would just bore everyone to tears. Hannah's just rolling her eyes over there. No, please. But I'm always asked about grocery budgets and how to set them how do you decide how much it should be? How can you stick to it? Um, how, do, how to make it work? And then I was asked again today, when I started the stockpiling, what did I do? How did I do it? Did I not buy the half price specials that came up in between monthly shops? Or did I keep money aside for those? So I, I want to go over all of that with everyone just to make it clear that it can be done, but this is the way I did it so that it works because I've been doing it for so long that it, it just works. You know, We've done this for a gazillion years now. It feels like forever. I can't remember back when we first got married on a Thursday night because we we're living in New South Wales and Thursday night was late night shopping night then. On a Thursday night, Wayne always worked back, I would go and do the grocery shopping and every week, I went mean, every week to Franklin's and to the fruit market and to the deli and to the butcher. I can't imagine doing that anymore because I... It, it was what I did then when it was just two of us. I can't imagine doing that and I couldn't think of anything worse than having to shop weekly anymore because it would just nearly drive me this, to distraction. I, I'm not a good deal with the crowds person. So I'll go over that, finish off the stockpiling and move on to the grocery budgets. It does sort of all fit in together. Yeah, so there we go. And I hope it's a plan, Leanne. Thank you, Pamela. If you think it's awesome, I hope it is. Um, all right. Oh, you need. What happened to me? Uh oh. Okay, I've got an invalid in the corner. Invalid in the corner. Oh dear, don't do that. No more damage to the knees. So. We'll have sausage rolls for lunch over the weekend. We have a little pie warmer, a little 12 volt pie warmer that Wayne plugs in for me. And I can um, heat pies and sausage rolls in it. It will even cook a roast. So we can cook a roast while we're traveling. So um, we can still have our nice warm pastries while we're camping and four wheel driving. So we'll have um, sausage rolls and some pies, I've got pies that I made for the pie maker. So they will be coming with us for our lunches. Keep us warm, we'll keep some in the fridge for the kids. I'm sure they won't last long. We'll come home to an empty container full of crumbs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully a sink with no dishes in it because I'll have to wash their own dishes if we can't get the dishwasher fixed before we leave. 
I'll be washing dishes. Alan did suggest that you go and buy paper plates and whatever floats your boat. Paper yeah. plates work. Paper plates work. No problem with that. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Any more questions, folks? Any release date on the book, yeah. Hopefully before Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Mother's Day is the second Sunday in May. It, it's on the final, it's put together. So it's now I'm going back through it, proof, proofing it again before it goes to the editor to be proofed and then it should come back to me if there's any corrections, then it has to go back. That shouldn't take long because I don't imagine there's that many, if any, corrections. There will be some, but... Um, there shouldn't be that many with the other books there was never a great deal of backwards and forwarding and then once that's done i will have a release date i will open up the pre-orders and it'll be done i have to i have to work out i'm negotiating whether they'll get shipped here and i send them or whether the publisher sends them. I'd rather, I think I'd rather them have them shipped here and I send them because um, I want to sign them. But also, I don't know, I just, it's the control freak in me coming out. I just need to know each order that comes in. I want to know that exactly when it's gone out. So little things like that we're still negotiating. But we'll get there. And... They, those things won't hold up the actual printing and binding and publication release date. They will just go ahead. So final edits, as I said on Tuesday, and the next two weeks will be frantic. If you see me you know, tearing my hair out if I come on and I've gone, ah, you'll know why. I've got bags under my eyes or bigger bags under my eyes or it's because I haven't been sleeping because I've been rereading and rewriting and going over things again and again and again as you do um, we've yet to decide on a name that's Hannah's cookbook Hannah's cookbook no I don't think so, I don't think so. we've yet to, to nut down and actually decide on a final name for it but yeah very exciting because I haven't done a book for so long and this one has been in the back of my mind for since Eat Well, Save More came out. So that's 10 years I've been thinking of doing this book and Isn't putting it away. Eat Well, Save More? Eat Well, Save More. Yeah. And thinking of, you know, thinking of it and putting it away because it was too hard and complicated then bringing it out you know if I did this then I could do this and then if I did this if I could do this then it got too hard so to get put away again so now we've got it nutted out so it should all work and hopefully it'll work for you as well as it works for me with meal planning and grocery shopping and cooking because it's just fun yeah. well Freya asks, it was a great Mother's Day present. Personally, I'm biased. I think it would be a brilliant Mother's Day present. But, you know, it's my book, so I'm a bit biased towards it. Lots of new recipes, lots of new recipes, different ways of doing things for, for um, traditional cooks. So I'm a bit of a lazy cook, so as I mentioned before, we're not master chef or... You know, my kitchen rules or anything like that. So it's got to be quick, it's got to be easy, it's got to be tasty, reasonably healthy and fit within my budget. And hopefully all of these, the recipes and the menus, meal plans, do all that for me, then hopefully they'll do all that for you too. I've also, I've taken into consideration that not everyone has access to Aldi, Aldi or Aldi. Hindustan or Coles or, yeah, you know, really good butchers like I have or great fruit and veg market. So 
I've taken those into consideration with the planning. I've made notes so that, you know, if there's anything that is a special ingredient or a specialist ingredient that is only accessible from one of those places, there's a little note for it and a suitable substitute because knowing knowing substitutes is another really um, important thing to um, control your grocery budget. Knowing what you can substitute and when and where um, cuts down the number of ingredients you have to buy and so saves you money, saves time, saves your energy, you're not lugging all that stuff home from the supermarket. Yeah. So. Good night, Catherine. Sleep well. All right, how are these sausage rolls going now? Browning up. We're browning up, but they're being a bit slow. So, yes, Hannah's, Hannah's really evil eye. So, you've got someone showing me, showing me. You can't see her, but she does this. And then a few minutes later, if I keep talking, it gets a bit faster, and then it gets, and then that gets a bit frantic, and I just pretend I can't see it and keep talking. Yeah, hurry up, people are sick of you. Oh, it's all right, that's a lot to say. Can I have a baby sausage roll? Here you go, baby sausage roll for my baby. There you go. She hasn't had dinner yet, in case you're wondering. She didn't get home till late. So. Thank you, my darling. All right. When is Hannah coming on camera? <laughs> Maureen wants to know when you're coming on camera. Hello. She doesn't know. Maybe maybe we'll get Hannah to do a show on her own when I'm away. What? No? She, she can't talk. She's going to have all the sausage roll. It's like the old Indians. So, yeah, we don't know. One day. One day, perhaps, maybe. Get off the edge so it doesn't break, my darling. Don't want to break the plate. All right. Um, I you see you on the screen on Tuesday. See my hand. See your hand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. I see my hands. My no, hiding my hand. There goes the dinger. Ah, starting to brown. I'll be less Yeah, starting to brown up. So they still need to go back in for a few more. Whoops. Baking paper, got to love it. Go back in for a few more minutes. So I'll swap them around again. Just put back in. Ouch. It's done very hard there, my arm. Oh. Done in no time. All right. Well, that's our sausage rolls. Best ever sausage rolls. Really tasty, really simple, really easy, really frugal. Usually quick. When your oven works, they're really quick. So it's starting to rattle now. Goodness. Don't blow up on me yet. So, yes, there we go. Hopefully, next week I'll have a dishwasher again. Yes, please. And what are you looking at? I said, you and Carolyn, when she makes sausage rolls, she uses any leftover pastry and make apple strudel rolls. Just use apple sultanas and a few spices, then small of scraps, make parmesan or mozzarella toast. Oh, wow. <laughs> Leanne, now please, yes, they do. I do that with pies, the leftover pastry. Yeah, when we, when we make pies, we don't have leftover pastry when we have sausage rolls, but when we're making the pies in the pie maker, we have the scraps. So we roll it out and make twists or little jam tarts or, or something like that just so it's not, um, not wasted. Um, or press them into um, patty cake pans and cook them and then add some caramel to them 
Yum. Or some lemon butter. Yum. A little bit of meringue on top. Mm -hmm. Mini little meringue pie is really good. Pamela is asking, have I reheated sausage rolls in a camp oven? Yes. Yeah. It's um, my issue with the camp oven is you have to wait for the fire to get the coals and you have to get the coals in the bottom, the camp oven on, the coals on the top, heat the camp oven up before you can actually put anything in. So it, it's quite a process to um, cook in the camp oven. But if you've got, you know, two or three hours before you're ready to eat, it's really good. And this weekend while we're away, I'm doing the um, apple crumble and it will go into the camp oven. And I line our camp oven uh, with foil. So I do that way and then that way. And then I do three or four layers of baking paper, put the apples in, put the crumble on top, sit it on the coals, put the lid on and heat it up. And it still takes about 25, 30 minutes to get the crumble nice and crisp. But the trick is to actually preheat the camp oven. So, of course, then you have to have the coals for the fire. Mm. All right, now. Yeah, cheese twists are really good. Do you add paprika? When I'm doing the cheese twists or the cheese strips with the pastries, we've got the grated cheese, and I add a little bit of paprika and a little bit of dry mustard, stir it through the cheese and sprinkle it on. Really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. yeah. So, all righty. Um, folks, that's what they look like when they're done. I recommend them. I like them. I recommend them. Happy for you to do that. So I think I'm going to pack up and get ready for bed and hopefully go to bed because we'll be up early tomorrow so we can hit the road and Head off to beautiful Walhalla. Do you ever have the opportunity to go to Walhalla? Absolutely gorgeous little town. Tiny little town, beautiful little bed and breakfast in town. But it's nice to just spend a day and have a walk through. It's beautiful. It's quite remote. It's close to Melbourne, reasonably close to Melbourne, but it's still quite remote. And, in fact, until about 10 years ago, it wasn't on the electricity grid. So it was, I think, the last town last town in Australia to actually be connected to the grid. But it's a lovely little spot. We really enjoy Walhalla. Okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Yes, I'll tell you all about it when we come back. I might even have some photos to show you if I can figure out how to do it. All right, thanks so much for joining us tonight. If you really enjoyed the show, don't forget to hit the thumbs up down there. I would really appreciate it. And, of course, feel free to share the um, video. If you wait just a few minutes, once we finish, it takes about five minutes for YouTube to process and everything before it pops back up again. But we'll be here and back up as usual. And I will see you on Tuesday night to finish off, finish off stockpiling and start on grocery budgets. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night.